Hey everyone, it's Ryan with SacramentoAppraisalBlog.com and today I wanted to show you how to make a trend graph using MLS data. Okay, you can do this for any neighborhood, okay? And, and the power of this is, is that instead of looking at zip code figures or county figures, state figures, you can narrow down specific sales in, in a very precise neighborhood or area and show them exactly on a graph so that your seller or your client or uh, friends or whoever you're doing this for can can really see what the market is doing and they can get a sense of oh well maybe I shouldn't list my price above the market or below the market or or maybe the appraiser was sort of right on with the values in the neighborhood or gosh the appraiser was off and so there's a lot of benefits to doing this and at first it might seem tedious and it might take a little bit of time but uh, over over a while, you can get this down so quickly, and you can make very powerful illustrations in just a matter of a couple minutes. And so, let me show you today. Here's this. Imagine you're listing a property in Rancho Cordova. Here's an example, and your example could be anywhere: East Sac or River Park, Old River, Fair Oaks, Carmichael, wherever. So, imagine your your uh, uh, your owner, the person you're going to list with, says, "Well, you know." I'd really like to list my house at 210,000 or, or 230,000. My house is so much better than anything else out there. It's a three bedroom, one bath. And so, of course, you look up comps in the neighborhood and you think, wow, there's really not anything selling at that price level. So you can, of course, bring your sales and bring your listings and, and talk with the owner. But you can also prepare a graph to help show the neighborhood. Okay, you don't have to have a lot of technical skill to do this, but but here goes let me show you okay go to search in mls go to map and uh use the polygon search you um you can you can draw uh your your neighborhood boundaries around here that's what i've done already i'm going to save some time to do that now what i want to do is look at all sales uh i might usually maybe look at sales over the last year to help show trends but i'm going to look at sales in this case over the last five years because i really want to prove a point to to this property owner Okay, MLS lets you use sales from October 2008, so that's what I'm going to do. October 2008 through April 2014, I'm going to look at all three-bedroom, one-bath sales. Now, you might look at, say, you're um, trying to uh, list a property at 1,400 square feet. Maybe you'd look at everything from 1,200 to 1,600 square feet. You decide what's going to be most relevant. Click on Export. Okay, pretty easy so far, right? Okay. Go to Realty Tools Without Photos. If you're using a different MLS, just figure out with your MLS how how can what is the option you can choose that's going to help you export data. Okay, there's a zip file. I'm going to right click on it, go to Save Link As. I'm going to call it let's see Rancho Cordova Sales. Okay, three bed, one bath example. Okay, click save, save that to my desktop. Let me show you how messy my desktop is in just a sec here. Yes, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna double click on that. And here's the data, I'm gonna double click that. Let's move this right over here. And here's what I want. I want to work with sales. Here's the sold price and here's the sold date, okay? I wanna work with these two things because my x-axis is going to be the date and my y-axis is going to be price. You remember when we said, hey, we'll never work with math again in algebra class. Teacher, how is this relevant? Well, here's an application. We're going to use some math. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so um, you highlight the whole column for the price and uh, by clicking above here on D. And I'm going to right-click on that and go to Cut because I want to bring it over here. Okay, I'm going to click on G and then right-click and go Paste. Okay, now really to highlight all of my data here, look, I want uh, my x-axis is going to be on the left, and my y-axis is going to be on the right, okay? This will be like clockwork. Trust me, you won't even have to think about this after a while, but I'm going to simply click, click down, hold down F and G, okay? So I move my mouse over to both of them. I'm going to click on this chart icon, okay? Now, you can use Excel. I use Excel all the time. I usually use numeric for these types of graphs, but here's my graph. Okay, and I click insert, and here's what it looks like so far. Okay, it's not very attractive. You can see here's the $200,000 mark. So this is gonna definitely tell something to your seller who wants to list at 230, but let's spend just a couple minutes on this graph to make it look nice. I double clicked on it. 
and let's add a title okay add a title and you can you can sort of stop and, and see what I'm doing you know put it on pause if you need to you know go a little bit more slowly that's fine let's see uh, let's see all three bed one bath sales in Rancho Cordova okay north of highway 50 all right so we're gonna do that um, let's make the font a little larger okay and then let's see uh, I'm gonna just style this a little bit go to the back plane instead of gray I'm gonna make it blue because I'm kind of a blue guy like that here's the x-axis okay down here is the date and first of all let me add a label to that because I want people to know these are sales from October 2008 to April 2014 a good graph is going to be able to help illustrate you're, you're going to be able to look at it and it's going to be clear what you're looking at okay let's also add um, an access line okay because that puts the date up there um, let's correct real quick the date because it has it from January 2008 but we're really looking at October 2008 through April 2014 so all right, so let, let's fix that real quick. I'm gonna, I'm still on X axis right here, and I'm gonna add something. I'm gonna add a major grid, and what that does is add lines to the graph. Okay, this is gonna help us really read the graph better. But instead of having a year long on everything, let's look at, um, let's insert lines every quarter. That would be 91.25 days, um, and so you have all these neat, neat lines right there. Okay, piece of cake. Here's the y-axis. This is the sales price in MLS. Okay. First of all, let's add an access line that adds a line over here. That another access. <laughs> let's add a label. Okay. We're going to put reported price in MLS. Okay. Piece of cake. And then the last thing, let's add an access line. Okay. Let's see here. Oops. Um, excuse me. Major grid. Okay, and you can see it added the horizontal line. Now, let's add it every 10,000 though. It was on 20,000, let's cut that in half and see what that does. Okay, apply. Now, your seller wants to list, actually let's save, let me, let me right click on this and save it to my desktop so you can see what it looks like. Okay, RC sales example, save. Right click on that. Oops. Okay, you guys get the point here. Okay, so you can see here, here are all recent sales. You can see there has been nothing above 185 for three bed, one bath sales. So your seller wants to list at 230. Here is a great visual representation. We took um, a few minutes to put this together, and honestly, I could have probably done it and two minutes or so maybe and, and had it look this stellar without all the explanations. But can you see how adding this to, to your real estate um, utility belt could be a very powerful tool for you? If you're an agent, this can help you stand out among all other agents who are relying upon zip code data or uh, looking to state data or national trends. When you can get down in the neighborhood and show what's going on, it can be really powerful business and help create uh, more professionalism for you too. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions as you get started. Would love to uh, offer any insight and uh, hope this was helpful. Hey, thanks. Take care. Okay.